Once again, I was so surprised by another feature that I didn't even know existed with uh, Affinity Designer. And I asked my daughter who works at the marketing and creative department at a university where they use the Adobe Suite, whether this feature existed in any of the Adobe products because I had so long last used it. And she confirmed that it doesn't exist. She was actually quite surprised as to this particular feature that I showed her. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. If we go and we open up the file, now I've got different variations because I just want to explain how it, how it actually works. And you can experiment with it. So the original picture was, I'm going to just delete this JPEG because there's no transparency on it. So the original picture is the Blender PNG. Okay, so it's it comes in with a artboard or a background and it has the image it's locked let me just unlock it so this is the image so if you bring in the image like i've done now so click on the image and bring it in it will come in but it won't work with this particular technique what you've got to do is open up an empty uh, document and paste in the image onto it and then it will work so it respects that you want to work with this image so this uh, effect if you click onto the colors here it's not going to do anything here because it understands that you want to bring for example this image in and you then want to do additional stuff so your focus is this is the image you're bringing in but if you bring in a clear document and you're pasting this image in it then intuitively understands that you want to modify or you have the ability to modify that in in a shorter number of keystrokes as possible okay so I've opened this. If I choose color, nothing happens. Now let me show you. Let's say I open a new document. Okay, so I make it a web document, make it thousand by thousand pixels. So this is exactly the same like previously, but it's got no image attached to it. So I'm going to go get that same image and I'm going to place it. So which one was it? This Blender one. Okay, and the reason I'm using the Blender thing is because I'm quite excited about Blender 2.8. I'm a SketchUp and C4D guy always avoided Blender because it kind of just felt a bit uh, clumsy although it's a very powerful program but now I got excited because 2.8 just brings everything home but that's another story so if I open this and I paste it so now it understands that I've pasted in this image um, it's not the original part of the document so I could modify it in a quick step and the quick step is when I go to my color palette, look what happens. Okay, boom. If I go there, whatever color I'm choosing, it all blends in there. Very, very interesting. But the point I want to also just highlight, which I'll show you with the additional images that I'm going to bring in, is that it seems that everything that has a color, I think they would refer to it as a U or a uh, um, texture, color, or whatever, Everything that has a color will change according to the image, the colors that I'm pulling in here. Um, they might come across as different um, intensities, like this middle thing here is a blue, itself is blue, a certain level of blue. Um, and here you can see it is, it's a bit darker than the outsides, but it generally takes on all the color here. And I was wondering whether, you know, uh, if it was a black dot, whether it would take on the color, because this white area doesn't seem to be affected by it. Um, and I'll show you that literally anything that's totally black and totally white is not affected by this this kind of overlay thing uh, when you place an image and then you start to do with this color wheel. Uh, I'll show you some examples. But this is quite incredible. And then the next thing I looked at is whether the gradient tool would be affected also. So click gradient and moved it. And okay, the one that I've chosen now is almost the similar colors. Uh, so I'm going to just double click here and then go tweak it differently. Look at that. Okay, now if you had a color background and it wasn't transparent on the object you brought in, then of course I think if it's totally white, perfectly white, it won't affect that or perfectly black. But if it's a, a light gray or other color uh, background of the image, it will be affected by all the the colors that we are putting onto it. But look at this. I mean, I'm, if I click there and I go change that, we are literally working 
with a PNG and all the colors that are on there are immediately replaced by what we choose in this area. So you can see the power of this is that we, we probably can take a PNG high quality that is a particular color and we can recolor it without recreating it if the resolution and everything is fine and we, you, know, you don't have to turn it into a vector or anything. So this for me is so, so powerful. So if I go to transparency, let's see what happens. Same thing works here. Okay, let, if we go back to this and I use the transparency here, you'll see nothing will happen because we've opened this image. Although we're seeing it like on the same background, the program's understanding that we've opened this as an entity together. The fact that I can move the, the picture around on it is just part of the feature. But in this case, we opened a blank document, we put an image on, and just by clicking on that, we could change the overlay values, etc. I think this is so incredible. Okay, so what happens if we have a black? I'm going to do a black area. White area already, we've proven that having a white area is not affected by the colors. So that is quite cool. So let me go and... Uh, place. I did different levels of of kind of grays. I found out and I'm only going to just open this. Okay, let me open the black one first. If I go here, if I tweak that, can you see black is not affected or it's, it's not kind of visible. So delete that. I'm going to go and place a dark gray. So I wanted to check levels between white and, and uh, the white and black. So this is a kind of dark gray if I do that it pretty much still goes along the line of of how the colors affect it so it's not that much i think the closer you get to perfect white the less you notice it the closer you get to perfect black the less you're going to notice this effect that we have on here okay let me just try the last one that i created which was this light gray so if we do this i anticipate this would change color you'd notice just a slight difference okay can you see there so it, it has changed to a, a, diff, a sort of a level with a lower saturation because it was, it's closer to white, this area. So you can sort of manipulate it to your heart's content as to what you want. But I think this is so powerful. Um, these applications can be in whichever area. I'm, I'm looking at it in a place like you have a logo like this, and you're putting it into a document and you go like, okay, I think I want that logo just to be all one particular color. Because you know that's also a dark color. So you go, okay, we make it say red. There we've got it as red. Then if you bring in another image, you can say place. Let's choose some other thing. I oh, will use the affinity logo. We'll bring this in. With this one, we can modify it there to be whichever color. Isn't that incredible? So hopefully this excites you. Um, you can see many uses for it. I, I think it's so powerful because uh, you could go get a lot of PNGs if it's not the proper color. You know there's no sort of tracing it and creating layers and you know adding all the different stuff. It's a matter of bringing it in, placing it, and then just using the color wheel to get that going. So hopefully that excites you and gives you a bit of insight into improving your workflow. So yes, have a fantastic day and God bless.